We may not realize it, but the biggest story of our lifetime may have broken yesterday. Actually, may end up being the biggest story in the history of mankind. We just don't know it yet. Have I got you hooked? Yesterday, NASA released incredibly high-resolution images of deep space revealing details of our universe that scientists will be studying for decades. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope reveals outer space that was previously obscured to us, and now us human beings are able to see far reaches that we have never seen before. Let's bring in our guest, chief astronomer of the Franklin Institute, Derek Pitts, who can help us figure out what we are looking at here. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Love the background. Now, I think I understand why this is such a big deal, but you can certainly explain it a heck of a lot better than I can. So tell us, why is this such a big deal? James Webb Space Telescope is a big deal because it's going to allow us to begin to answer questions about the early history of the universe that we've wondered about for a very long time. It has always sort of baffled us how it was that the universe came into existence, how it expanded to its current size, and what's going to happen to it. And there are lots of other questions mixed in there, Dan, about you know, what the possibilities are for other planets like ours around the universe and things like that. But this really is going to be able to answer a lot of questions we have. And almost more importantly, it's going to allow many more questions to be posed about the universe. Now, I want to show something called the Carina Nebula. It is quite stunning, but tell us what it is and why it's important. What's really cool about this image is that this is a very high resolution image of a gas cloud in space where stars are being born. So if you can see in the image behind me here and this image here now, you can see all of those bright white dots are stars buried in that gas cloud. Now, previously, when Hubble Space Telescope looked at this same area, it didn't have the capability to see all those new stars buried in this cloud of dust and gas. But James Webb Space Telescope, working in the infrared portion of the spectrum, the heat portion of the spectrum, can penetrate those gas clouds. And that's the really unique thing about this telescope, is it can see into regions of the deep universe that we haven't been able to see into before. And this telescope is what, like as big as a tennis court? I mean, like, what is it? It's like floating out there? How does it work? It's 21, the mirrors on this telescope are 21 foot in diameter. The whole telescope itself is about the size of a, telescope, uh, a tennis court. It's located at a point about 1 million miles away from Earth where it can be shielded from the radiation in our solar system and it can remain really, really cool. That's how it works. And what it does is it gathers heat signatures from objects at extreme distances. And what's really fascinating is that the engineers had the ingenuity to create these highly sensitive instruments that can pick out these tiny little specks of universal material at such great distances. And, and, and I'm going to ask him to put up one other picture but while I'm asking you this. But what's amazing is what we're seeing is the pictures we're seeing are actually thousands of years old, right? Explain that. Right, so as we look at these objects that are at such great distances from us, what we realize is that the light we're receiving today left a long time ago. And when I say a long time ago, I mean like a really long time ago. So for example, in this image of uh, Stefan's Quintet, which is a cluster of four galaxies we see here, uh, one of these galaxies is 40 million light years away. That means the light we see today left 40 million years ago. So this allows us to see what this portion of space was like 40 million years ago. Now let's stretch that out all the way out to the, one of the first images that was shown where we're looking at objects that are seven, uh, seven billion light, I'm sorry, not seven billion light years, but uh, seven million light years away. We're seeing that portion of the universe as it looks seven million years ago. And if we really want to stretch it, where the telescope's limit is, is about 13 billion light years out. So we're seeing the very earliest portions of the universe wow. as they appeared 13 billion years ago. Wow. I mean, this is just, it, it, it is really astonishing stuff. And it's going to allow us to learn more potentially about our own universe, about our own world, right? I mean, there, there are aspects of this which will help us learn about Earth. 
So there's two pieces to this actually, Dan. Number one is that the information that we glean from this instrument, particularly about the technology, will eventually trickle down and help us in our everyday life, but it's also gonna help us understand more about us humans as living creatures in the universe. Wow. So it's really gonna tell us a lot more about ourselves even than the universe and, itself. And the good news is as these new pictures come in, we know the next time we have you back on, you'll have a new backdrop. So that'll be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will, and I'm sure it'll be just as spectacular. Derek Pitts, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Before we go, a quick reminder, we're going to be dedicating the full hour this Friday night to my new live police show, On Patrol Live, ahead of next week's big premiere. If you have questions for me, Sticks Larkin, the deputies who will be on the show, including Richland County, will answer them on Friday. Tweet me at, at Dan Abrams. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.